Let's talk about Colorado and USC, because now the question again is going to be, can Colorado keep it close? Can Colorado shock the world? Can Colorado do it again? And I think throughout the course of the week, the talk on Colorado has has kind of settled down because we saw what a lot of us knew to be true, which is, look, Colorado's better than we thought, but they're not a conference contender. That is plain and obvious to everybody now after a 42-6 drubbing against Oregon. I expect USC to have similar success against them. Now, Colorado's goal in this game, the way I would put them on Monday show into the lean win department, which is a reflection of what I think the mood should be amongst the fan base of each particular team. We do it every Monday here on the show. The way they could be in a lean win if they lose the game is if they hang around, is if at halftime, it's still a game. Because last week, by halftime, that wasn't a game. They were out of it. It was done. Hanging around for a half against USC, that would certainly be an improvement. So what do they need to do? What do they need to do to put up a competitive battle, to maybe lose by 10, to maybe lose by 13, instead of losing by 36 with your first touchdown coming late in the fourth quarter, as they did against Oregon last week. And I do suspect they will have more success for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think Oregon's defense is better than USC's, though the Trojans is improved from a year ago. They have still shown some signs of weakness, particularly open field tackling. I look for Colorado to try and exploit that even without Travis Hunter offensively with Xavier Weaver and uh, Jimmy Horn. And the other thing is the Buffs are playing at home. Last week, they were a 21-point underdog on the road. They're now a 21-and-a-half-point underdog at home. And if you're going to hang around if you're Colorado, a couple things have to be different from the Oregon game. Number one, you have to be able to protect your quarterback. This is an improved USC front four. Bear Alexander has been good from what I've seen from him this year. And I think that's kind of the general consensus. Anthony Lucas has been a part of it as well. But if Colorado, as we saw last week against Oregon, cannot protect Shadur Sanders, it's over. And Deion Sanders had a hilarious quote, by the way. I didn't uh, write it down word for word, but he had a quote about running the football. And uh, basically, the the gist of the quote was, no, we're not going to try to do something we haven't been very good at because Colorado's not running the football this year. They are last, dead last, even behind Stanford, in rushing yards per game offensively. So against a USC team that has struggled to defend the run over the last couple of years, particularly in a couple matchups against Utah and in the Cotton Bowl against Tulane, Colorado is not capable of exploiting their greatest weakness defensively. That's not a great thing for the Buffs. So it's going to be on Shooter Sanders. Again, I think he'll do better, hot take here, than 159 yards passing with, uh, with, with one touchdown, as he did against Oregon. I think he'll be a little bit better at home. I think they'll be juiced up. But he has to be protected. And defensively, look, Colorado doesn't need to have a dominant defensive outing. They're not going to, okay? Oregon moved the ball at will. USC is going to move the ball at will. USC runs the football a lot better than you think. U- USC, you think of Caleb Williams, you think of Zachariah Branch, Lincoln Riley. Go look at their running numbers this year. They're quite good on a yards per carry basis. Average about six yards a carry last week against Arizona State. And I, or that was the week against uh, Arizona or against Stanford the week prior, but they've been able to run the football. That, that has been something they have had success with, and I expect them to continue to have success. I don't think they're going to abandon the run. So if you're Colorado, I think your best chance defensively, despite what we saw last week, is to try and take away the ground game on that side of the ball, and you have to protect, to protect Shador Sanders. I don't know why that's such a tongue twister for me, but it is. If you can do those two things, you can hang around in the football game, but that's an if because Colorado has struggled in both areas so far this year. A mailbag question came in from Tyler, by the way, about playing early in the morning. This is the big noon kickoff game. So this game is at 12 Eastern, 10 Mountain Time, 9 a.m. Pacific. The USC Trojans playing in the 9 a.m. Pacific window is not something we see very often. And in a certain world could lead me to be on the buffs plus 21 and a half at home, three touchdowns and a half point hook, because USC doesn't play early in the morning. Here's, what, here's where I stand on that. I see how it can matter a bit 
it might lead to a shakiness at the start, but I don't think it's going to have a significant impact on the game because the talent disparity here is too great. So I like USC to win and I like USC to cover. I think it's 45 to 20. This is a USC team that put up their fewest points of the season last week against Arizona State. Spencer, how many did they score? 42. 42 points. That's their lowest output of the year. Given that Colorado just gave up 42 points. Now, granted, it was on the road. Sure. Absolutely. Who thinks that Will Stein's a better play caller than Lincoln Riley? I don't. Who thinks Caleb Williams is not as good a quarterback as Bo Nix? I don't. Who thinks USC's weapons aren't as good as Oregon's? I don't. So yes, you're giving the home field component. You're also giving an even more prolific passing attack with maybe the sharpest offensive play caller in all of football. Give me the give me the Trojans to win this one and win it big, 45 to 20. That's pick number one. Now, on tonight's matchup, which, oh man, am I excited for this one. And if you're listening to or watching this on Saturday, you've already seen what's happened. And I've already enjoyed the, uh, the joys of watching what is going to be an entertaining slugfest football game. As much as that matchup in Boulder could be a shootout, this has all the makings of being the exact opposite. Here you have the best defense in the Pac-12, Utah, against a quarterback who has struggled each of the last two weeks, DJ Uyunglele, and then a good defense at home, playing motivated after a poor performance last week, Oregon State, against a backup quarterback in all likelihood, Nate Johnson. The over-under in this game is somewhere in the 45 range. I'm just letting that marinate for a moment, because as over-unders go, that's pretty low, and there's a reason. And guess what? I think the under's going to hit. You can bet all that sort of stuff over at FanDuel, but... For Oregon State, they're a a three-and-a-half-point favorite here against Utah. And I like the Beavs. I like the Beavs 21-16. to I think they win tonight. Motivation. Defense has a bounce back against Nate Johnson. This is not going to be an Oregon State team excited. This is going to be an Oregon State team playing urgently. And they have to. Because if they don't win tonight, they're not making the Pac-12 championship game. Forget it. It's not going to happen. So... They have to win. They are at home. They've been a great team at home. Nate Johnson on the road. I don't trust it. I'll take the Beavs to win. I'll take the Beavs to cover. Let's get to our next game here. Oregon's going to the farm to take on Stanford, and they are the biggest favorite of the weekend at 27 points. It's a lot to swallow on the road, and guess what? I'm swallowing it for the prime picks this week. Oregon 52, Stanford 17. Nothing lines up here for the Cardinal, who played well against Arizona last week. Fact check, true. Was it the Cardinal played well or the Wildcats played poorly? You tell me. Oregon's rolling right now. Their starters have not allowed a touchdown in either of the last two games against Colorado and Hawaii. And guess what? Stanford is a lot closer. In fact, I think behind Colorado from a talent standpoint, and they are slightly above, though not by a ton, compared to Hawaii. I think Oregon, as long as they avoid a first quarter kind of letdown because there won't be much of an environment out on the farm on Saturday afternoon, I think the Ducks are going to roll. Bo Nix has looked very good. He has not been pressured once again behind that offensive line, which had some reshuffling this offseason, so far has looked really good. The Cardinal have been better against the run. They've struggled against the pass. Oregon has succeeded with both to this point. They were great against Colorado last week. I don't think this one is close. I think the Ducks run away with it early. 52-17, final score prediction there. So I'll swallow almost four touchdowns. Actually, that line moved up to 27 and a half. I think Oregon wins by 28 or more. I think they win, uh, as my prediction says here, by 35. Here's an interesting one. Here's a really, really interesting one. The California Golden Bears, who a lot of people would power rate as, I don't know, the 10th best team in the conference, taking on Arizona State, who a lot of people would power rate probably, you know, 11th or 12th, probably 11th. And at this point in time, that's where I had when my power rankings earlier this week. By the way, I had the Bears 10th as well. I know I've been a big Cal fan. They haven't impressed me so far, and that was part of my metric on Tuesday. Some people didn't quite understand that, but you know what? That's okay. Arizona State is going into Berkeley as a 12.5-point dog. 12.5. 
It's a curious number. It's a weird kind of in-between number, right? It's not quite two touchdowns, but it's not a touchdown and two field goals. It's just under that. Here's the thing with Arizona State. They've had a revolving door of quarterbacks so far this year. It has been Jaden Rashada, Drew Pine, Trenton Borgay. They keep rotating through. And yet the results aren't changing that much. They actually had a better offensive week against USC than they'd had in any week prior. They were shut out by Fresno State. They put up just 24 on FCS Southern Utah. They didn't get to the 20-point threshold against Oklahoma State the week prior, who we know is not a very good Power 5 team. Arizona State with Trenton Borgay at the helm beat Washington last year. Now, the health is an issue for, for the Sun Devils. They have injuries all over the place, and that's unfortunate for them. However, let's talk about the Cal Golden Bears. So the Bears, who I was bullish on from the time spring football opened, when I was telling everybody, hammer over four and a half, over four and a half, over four and a half, and then it moved up to five and a half, and I said, I don't know, stay away. Cal is sitting at two and two on the season. Wins against North Texas and Idaho, losses to Auburn, and then last week to Washington. When Cal's offense gets going, you know what they do? They run the football. They run the football well. Isaiah Fonse, Jaden Ott, that's a great running back tandem. Good enough to be, I'd say, top half in the Pac-12. Both are good football players. And when they had it rolling against North Texas, what did they do? They ran the football. If I asked you right now, how many rushing yards per game do you think Arizona State is allowing? What would you say? What would you say? What do you think that number is? Right now, it's sitting at 120 yards per game. Probably a lot lower than you thought, isn't it? Now, Southern Utah, not a good team in the, the football running department. USC, a very good team at running the football. Oklahoma State, eh, not great. And Fresno State, a little bit more air-oriented. Or, or, is, or is Arizona State just making them be that way because they're actually kind of solid against the run? I don't hate what I'm seeing from Arizona State defensively. I've always loved the Brian Ward hire, their defensive coordinator. I do not believe they're going into Berkeley and winning this football game. Cal is a better team across the board. Cal in two home games this year against Idaho and Auburn, allowing 13 and a half points per game. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And... I'm now realizing I actually did that math incorrectly, and it's 15 and a half. But you know what? Potato, potato. They've been a good defensive football team on their home field. So I don't think Arizona State is going to score a lot of points in this game. I'll put it around the 13 to 16 mark. So then the question becomes, how much do I trust Cal's offense? Well, given that they have a quarterback battle right now, not a lot. Not a lot. And if they're not going to have a great running game there, I think ASU hangs around for longer than they should. Cal 24, ASU 13. ASU plus 12 and a half into the prime picks, though. Now, here's Washington. Uh, each of the last two weeks, I've picked against Washington here in the prime picks. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on th me. Fool me thrice. Look, maybe Vegas has just got my number here for uh, picking these games. I'll take Washington and I'll lay the 17 and a half even on the road. It's going to be a ruckus environment. It is going to be a ruckus environment down in Tucson. Arizona is a program on the rise. They are three and one. They barely beat Stanford last week. This is a Washington pick more than it is an anti-Arizona pick because I look at the Wildcats and say, I like what they did against Mississippi State. I didn't like what they did against Stanford. Kind of up and down. I still think they can be a team that gets over 500 this year if they beat one or two of the top five teams in the pack. Now, that said... Washington's just cooking. Arizona's defense is improved. Is it enough to go against Washington? No, I don't think so. I don't think they've got the players on the back end to make that happen. It's going to be a great test, and they're in front of their home fans. But 17 and a half, Washington 49, Arizona 24. I think the Wildcats hang around for maybe the first quarter, and then Washington turns on the gas. So prime picks for the week, USC minus 21 and a half. I need a winning week. I am Two, I, I've, I've got nine right, 11 wrong. I'm two games under 500. Psh, don't like that. USC minus 21 and a half on the road. I got a lot of road favorites this week. Three of them, as a matter of fact. 
Oregon minus 27 and a half, Oregon State minus three and a half, ASU plus 12 and a half, Washington minus 17 and a half. Your game picks and Pac-12 prime picks for the week.